these four horrible, radical left Democrat <laughs> investigations of your all-time favorite president, me, is just a continuation of the most disgusting witch hunt in the history of our country. Thank you very much. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, John Mulaney, India Amatifio, and music from Canada with Cleto and the Cletos. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. majors here, but today is a very big day for American literature. Uh, the highly anticipated new book from former President Pizza J. Hutt was just released today. It's, it's a heavy one, just like old Donald himself. It's called Letters to Trump. This is a book of letters, mostly letters famous people wrote to him before he was president, uh, thanking him for letting him play golf at his golf course or stay at his bordello in Florida. But this is back when... <laughs> He was getting down with Jeffrey Epstein and firing meatloaf and barging into teen beauty pageant dressing rooms, the good old days. But I guess the intent of this book is to prove that the people who don't like Trump now are hypocrites because they didn't support him when he was president. Let me tell you something. I have a lot of friends that I wouldn't want to be president. I, in fact, almost all of my friends I would not want to be president. But this is quite a book. Here are notes from uh, Nixon. Kim Jong-un, Bob Hope, Tommy Lasorda. It's this weird variety. It's like he just showed up at a publisher's office and dumped a box of envelopes on their desk. A lot of the letters aren't even from famous people. A lot of them are just letters he sent to famous people. <laughs> for real, like Serena Williams and David Copperfield, there's a letter. He sent David Copperfield a letter thanking him for some brownies he sent. <laughs> and he printed this in the book. And you can read that letter now for only $99.99. I'm going to give this back to you. There are letters to and from prominent Democrats. You know, he's been talking about this letter from Hillary that's gonna be so embarrassing. It's a signed form letter thanking him for a donation. The guy who calls every Republican who doesn't like him a rhino supported and donated money to Governor Cuomo, Chuck Schumer, and Hillary Clinton. He invited George W. Bush to the teen, Miss Teen USA pageant. For real, Bush wrote back, he, unfortunately, Laura and I are booked that day. <laughs> There's a letter from Princess Diana thanking him for sending uh, birthday flowers that she definitely didn't write. There's a lot about Oprah. He's very upset with Oprah. He's very upset with Alec Baldwin. He says when Alec Baldwin was young, he loved him. He, would, he said he would beg Trump to let him play him in a movie about his life. And um, <laughs> instead, he played him on a TV show about his life. But he <laughs> also said he finds it very hard to believe Alec Baldwin didn't know the gun was loaded. He wrote this in the book. He's such a dick. He really is. He just... <laughs> So, uh, Magatha Christie was hawking the book on Newsmax last night and also waxing poetic about some of the turncoat celebrities who wrote to him. Even Rosie O'Donnell writing me beautiful letters. She was writing me beautiful letters. She liked me. I don't think she likes me so much anymore, but she liked me. But Rosie O'Donnell writing me letters, we have a lot of them, and I have a lot of them left, too. Incredible. I'm not looking to do another book. But uh, the book just hit number one on Amazon immediately. I mean, like, immediately it went to number one, and I think it's going to be very interesting to a lot of people, and I think people are going to learn from this book. Right, right. Yeah, it'll <laughs> probably be taught in Florida schools. This is, um... <laughs> By the way, the be this beautiful letter Rosie wrote to him, this is the note she wrote him. Dear Donald, the show was great. You were perfect. Hope you had fun, Rosie. <laughs> I love that he thinks this is a beautiful letter. As a talk show host, I'm gonna tell you with absolute certainty, that is the same note she sent every guest who ever did her show. <laughs> I will be sending that very note to John Mulaney tomorrow, okay? <laughs> but this, the book, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. It's not just notes and letters. As Greg Kelly from Newsmax pointed out, there are photographs too. There is a picture of you in a sweatsuit in this, in this book, which we've never seen before. That's excellent. I think it's uh, another side to you. Yes, yeah, I don't know. Do, do potatoes even have sides? I don't know. <laughs> and let's take a look at that sweatsuit shot. There he is. 
<laughs> Donnie Man Boobs fondling the Olympic torch. <laughs> Not only is he a man of letters, he is a man of words. He's a man of the best words, words that are made entirely of letters. And when it comes to letters, <laughs> no president has given us more of them than Donald Jessica Trump. If I use the A word, they'll say, oh, Trump used foul language. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Well, the B word is a bad word. It's not a word that people like, but actually it's a word that's getting used more and more. Some of you came from parts of the world where it's socialist or worse. You know, it's called the C word, right? The C word. I just hate to use the D word. He started using the F word. Do you remember in front of this girl? And it was unbelievable. He was using the F word, F word, F word. I don't even like using the H word because if I use that word, they'll say he used foul language. All of a sudden, I hear last night, they're going to have a meeting right before this meeting to talk about the I word. The I word. Can you imagine? Putin has said things over the last year that are really bad things, okay? He mentioned the N-word one time. I was shocked to hear him mentioned the N-word. You know what the N-word is, right? He mentioned the N-word. Can't use the N-word. Two N-words you can't use. You don't mention, I call it the N-word. You have two N-words. You don't mention either one of them. The N-word, which is the nuclear word in this case. There are two N-words, right? There's which one's worse? Uh, they're both real bad. They start throwing the R-word out there. Uh, it's a terrible thing. I mean, it's a terrible thing. I'm the least racist person there is. I know words. I have the best words. No, I mean, we almost got them all. I <laughs> get past that N-word eventually. There were no letters from Joe Biden in Trump's book. Uh, president Biden today made it official he is running for president again. He said he's running to battle for the soul of America, which is, I don't know, that's a lot to battle for. Most people his age are barely winning the battle against constipation. <laughs> but make no mistake, Grandpa Joe is back on the road to the White House, and he's doing 35 in the center lane with his blinker on. When I ran for president four years ago, I said we're in a battle for the soul of America. What is the soul of America? Freedom. Wisdom. Kindness, empathy, style. I'm talking about panache, man. Whispering. I wrote the bill. Just because it sounds cool. $1.9 trillion. Shaking hands, kissing babies, and getting plenty of shut-eye. <laughs> Buying war bonds just to keep the Kaiser on his toes. Delaware, trains, those old beer cans with the bull tabs. Whatever happened to those, man? slipping a few candy buttons into your phosphate just to see how fast the sugar rush makes you pedal your bike with a big wheel on the front. And a healthy appreciation for the gams on Greta Garbo. I'll pledge allegiance to her any day. Which reminds me of the most important thing of all. Necking with your best gal in the back of the drive-in picture show. Go for it, Jack. What the heck was I talking about? Oh. I'm Joe Biden, and that's why I'm running for re-election. But first, I'm going to watch the Wheel of Fortune. Give me a ball, Pat. And hello, Miss Vanna. Oh. Well, you know, he's still so very virile and vital, although if he wins, he'll be 82 when his second term starts. His face could be on money while he is still in office. <laughs> What an election. Trump and Biden are 76 and 80 years old. You know who else lets the oldest males run their society? Gorillas. Okay? <laughs> you know, in Mexico, and you know what? This is the kind of stuff President Trump was trying to wall us away from. The Mexican Navy just confiscated thousands of tequila bottles that were filled with liquid meth. The meth was about to be shipped out of the country. They, it was detected by drug-sniffing dogs. And thank God, Guillermo, could you imagine what would happen if you got a bottle of meth tequila? Yes, Jimmy, it's crazy. People need to be careful with that stuff. I hear it's very addicting. People start taking it and taking it, and they cannot stop taking it. Are you... Are you okay? Why are you talking so fast? What do you mean? I'm not talking fast. This is how I talk. It's great. You're great. Everything is great. I'm just excited because I love Tuesdays, and not just because of tacos. Taco Tuesday is great, but regular Tuesday is great, too. I also love Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday, too. Let's speak to that. Okay, but... Just do me a favor and, like, pace yourself, okay? You know, I was wondering why he cleaned the whole studio with a toothbrush today. We're getting more details about Tucker Carlson's ouster from Fox News. 
Tucker was reportedly blindsided by this. He had uh, no idea why he got fired. Although I have some ideas. I have like about 778 million ideas of why. But what I do know is that there were many satisfying headlines about this. This one being my favorite. Fox News staffers celebrate Tucker Carlson's departure pure joy. <laughs> Fox News and Tucker Carlson part of ways the rest of the network seems thrilled. Pure joy, one Fox reporter told Rolling Stone of their reaction to the split. No one is untouchable. It's a great day for America and for the real journalists who work hard every day to deliver the news at Fox. Well, let's not go overboard with it. <laughs> I'd like to see some evidence first that these real journalists exist at Fox. Firing Tucker doesn't make Fox News a real news outlet any more than firing Jared made Subway a real Subway, okay? <laughs> But he does have options. Russia Today, the official Russian propaganda outlet, tweeted that he is welcome there anytime. And the top propagandist on Russian state TV said, we will happily offer you a job if you wish to carry on as a presenter and host. You are always welcome in Russia and Moscow. We wish you the best of luck. That's the thing about a situation like this. You really find out who your friends are, you know? <laughs> Both Donald Trump and Donald Trump Jr. came to Tucker's defense, which is funny because one of the texts that got Tucker Carlson fired is this one about Trump that said, I hate him passionately. He's a demonic force, a destroyer. And the worst part is he was texting Melania. I was thinking about Tucker today. Like, what did he do this morning? Did he wake up and scream a bunch of racist stuff into a bowl of oatmeal? And today must be especially hard because Mattel released a new Barbie doll with Down syndrome today, and he wasn't able to protest that. Tucker Carlson and Fox News, they've spent a lot of time waging war against the woke, uh, lashing out at companies like Budweiser for trying to be more inclusive, and it works. Get people fired up. So we decided to go out on Hollywood Boulevard and ask pedestrians about woke changes American companies have been making. These are changes that, of course, we made up, but just because the premise was fake doesn't mean the outrage isn't real. We're talking to people about woke culture in corporations. Tylenol announcing they'll be making a special bilanol specifically formulated for bisexuals. Do you think this will help alleviate the headache of deciding whether or not to have sex with a man or a woman? No. Tylenol has been around forever. I don't think we should have to change the name of a product. If you want to come up with something different for, for someone else, then, then do it. But I don't think we should have to change the name of a product. Are you at all bilinol curious? No. Not even a little? No. But that one time out by the lake? No. Home Depot is changing their name to Homosexual Depot. Really? <laughs> have they gone too far? Uh, if I change a name, yes, they have. They need to stick with Home Depot, and, and we got Lowe's to go to if we don't like it, so. Will you still be shopping at Homosexual Depot? I'll shop at Lowe's most of the time. I have better prices. McDonald's unveiling its logo, the M, which if you flip upside down, it's W, male, woman, AKA trans. Have they gone too far? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, whenever you're talking about sexuality all the time, I don't know why people have to. Cracker Jacks just announced that they'll now be known as white people Jacks. Cracker Jacks <laughs> right towards Caucasian. Is it finally time for that? No. This is food. The white people jacks will come with Josh Groban trading cards. OK. Well, congratulations. I don't eat it anyway, so I don't care. Hello, sir. What's your name? My name is Jareth. Jareth? Yes. How do you spell that? J-A-R-E-T-H. Jareth? Yes. OK, I think we got everything we need. So, twin dolls, they recently removed all the genitals. Do you think this is just the left pushing their agenda? Um, I didn't know they had genitals on the dolls ever. Some critics are saying this is what they want us to look like <laughs> with no genitals. I mean, I'm cool with my genitals. I like mine, you know. <laughs> they are what they are, you know. <laughs> I like women's genitals too, but they're not mine, so, you know. How would you rank genitals, top to bottom? Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ass number one, right? <laughs> and then, you know, vagina, then tits. Then probably my top three right there. And then what's at the bottom? At the bottom, I would say male stuff, but because I don't like male stuff, but I do have a penis myself, <laughs> which, is, which is good for me. 
good for all of them.